I'm Steven Luden, Chief Architect over at Akamai Technologies. I run a team, amongst other things, called Foundry. Our job is to try to make sure that Akamai stays a year or two ahead of the curve. We do our best. My son had a great eighth grade experience this past year. It was the most amazing science class that, that I've ever seen. I wish I could take it. They made them iteratively create tech invention after invention, measure it, figure out what was good with it, adjust it, and go back. Very practical scientific um, method. So he built a marshmallow cannon, like any good eighth grade boy should. Um, and he wanted to figure out how fast the marshmallow came out of this cannon, depending upon the pressure. Oh, this is great. But we didn't quite have the full-on Mythbusters scientific setup in my backyard. So I said, well, you had to think of something that would be kind of a proxy for that measurement. So he said, well, how about how far it went? And this is a perfect thing for a 13-year-old to measure. So he went out there. There, he did the research, uh, he did the thing, made this beautiful line of data, and for you makers out there, set your tasers to 40 PSI, and you will get the best measurement you can. So this got me thinking about how we measure and how we measure throughout our entire existence in the world. Uh, relevant to this conversation is, um, the schools, we test our kids. We take tests and we try to measure how well the schools do from that. Does it work? Mm, well, then we have economics. We're constantly making economic measurements to try to figure out how well we're doing. One of my favorites is, of course, this chart. Who here has seen this chart before? Yes, I'm sorry. And when I see this chart, my immediate response is, OK, what number do I need to say to get the good stuff? 10, I'm lying, 5, here's ibuprofen. And then, of course, relevant, very relevant today is politics. So poor Nate Silver. No one told him that the rules changed. The entire basis of measurement was going to be completely different this time. And he threw himself out there. But now, the hope is he'll have the last laugh. Um, but this is really about all building up to web performance and measuring web performance. So we use a bunch of metrics, and we've been using these for years, to try to figure out how well we're doing. We need a way to measure so we can figure out whether the change we made was good or whether it was absolutely bogus. But you guys went off over the past eight, 10 years and changed the game. You changed it out from under us. Ajax, lazy loading, responsive design. Critical sections. This is all completely changing the way we had to think about performance. So those of you who know this equation know it's all about correlation. So essentially what's happening is we are using correlated proxy measurements to figure out how well we're doing. And over the years, mainly because of the work that you have done, that correlation is getting smaller and smaller. A great example came from the filament group when they said, OK, we're going to see how well we can change the user experience by um, making sure the right stuff comes up first. We're not going to change the page weight. We're not going to do any other tricks, none of this async JS stuff. We're just going to go ahead and do this. And they found that without changing a single metric, they got a better uh, user pop, user experience by doing the, getting the right stuff out there. I did the same thing with the Akamai page. Same, same stuff. My clock is going down incredibly fast, so I'll skip that one. Boring. And the whole thing is about user experience. How do we measure the, what matters to our customers? Again and again, I hear someone say, you know, we made a change. It didn't do a thing to our metrics, but all of a sudden, sales went up or down. And they're you know, at a loss at what to do. But Luckily out there for us, we have this thing called user timing. And user timing gives you the power to go ahead and measure exactly what you want on the page. But though it's a powerful tool, on the HTTP Archive search, uh, search, only 23 of the top 1,000 are actually using user timing. The simple reason for that is it's hard. It's difficult. It's custom. It's not out of the box. Chrome doesn't give this to you. You have to make it. But there are some companies out there who are doing great inroads to try to go ahead and do things. Sosta, Speed Curve, giving you tools and giving you ways to do it. At Akamai, everything we do is about trying to optimize the user experience. So we're trying to go ahead and do this. We're not as concerned about the metrics as much as making sure the experience is good. So 
my call to action for this next year is go off, try to figure out how to make user timing easier to use, more powerful, and something that we can come back in a year and have a whole track on how to measure what matters. Thanks for your time.